Hello and welcome back to the series on named entity recognition for the purposes of the digital humanities. We're going to be doing this all in Python. In the last video, we looked at a series of videos, we looked at how we could use Spacey's entity ruler to generate a training list, to then use that training list to train a really kind of general purpose Harry Potter NER. Now it wasn't perfect. And the reason for that was that we only trained it on a data set that came from book one of Harry Potter. Moving forward, I've gathered all of seven Harry Potter books, uh, broke them down and developed a corpus underscore full dot JSON, which I'll be uh, talking about and using throughout this, um, these next few videos. And that allows us, to, that will allow me over the next few videos to train better models. And in the case of this video, talk very specifically about a very important concept called word vectors, word vectors. Word vectors are mathematical representations of words in a multidimensional space. This is how machine learning models understand words and understand contexts. Vectors can be used to represent words. They can be used to represent characters. They can be used to represent um, uh, sentences. And by characters, I mean a letter. So it, uh, they can be used for different ways to represent linguistic elements in mathematical terms. And we're going to be looking at some of these in this video and in the upcoming videos as we leverage uh, several different libraries in Python to train custom word vectors and improve our machine learning results. In this video, we're going to be talking about Spacey and Gensim. So Gensim is spelled like this. G-E-N-S-I-M, Gensim, and Spacey, we've already seen. Gensim is a library that was designed originally for topic modeling. In January of 2021, I will be having a whole series on Gensim and how you can use it to perform topic modeling. What we are going to do, however, is use Gensim for generating word vectors, which we're going to look very closely at in just a second. For right now, though, I want to talk about why uh, a Spacey model uh, has a hard time generalizing on Harry Potter data. So what I want to do is I want to use this function that I, I got from Stack Overflow. I'm always going to give you my source if I have it. So it, it's a great way to just calculate the distance between word vectors and therefore identify similarity between words um, given one word. So in this case, I'm going to be using, let's, let's use first the word Harry. So this is a um, a very essential kind of character in Harry Potter, right? Uh, oh, I got to delete these. So I'm going to delete those for right now because that's going to be causing a problem. And I'm also going to scroll down and we're going to get to this in a little bit. I'm going to just be blocking all of this out for right now. And again, I'll be sharing this whole file for you. It's kind of a mess, but it was per uh, intentional for this kind of video. So let's look and get the similarity of the word Harry. And for this function, we are going into the spacey large model and we're reading its uh, vectors and we're finding the 10 closest words in uh, that vector that vector space. So here we have Harry. Uh, actually, I'm actually quite surprised. We've got Harry, 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 Potter, 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 Hermione, Hermione, Hermione. So this model, the LG model from Spacely, it clearly, very clearly uh, was given some Harry Potter information. And we can kind of confirm this when we look at some very Harry Potter specific words. So if I were to type in uh, Gryffindor, let's do that. You're probably going to see Gryffindor spelt with a capital lowercase. Uh, that's what the Spacey LG model does is it's given clean and unclean data. So data that is capitalized, lowercase, etc. So that its vectors are quite, um, it's got a lot of words. I think it's 678,000 words. Um, yeah, and that's what you see, Gryffindor lowercase. So these are the most similar words. We see Slytherin, 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 Ravenclaw. So it's clearly understanding that that kind of concept. But when we start giving it Harry Potter words that aren't just relevant to Harry Potter, but relevant to domains outside of Harry Potter, we click, quickly start to see some problems. So let's give it Hippogriff. Hippogriff, of course, is Buckbeak in Harry Potter. It's an animal. It's a magical creature. The problem here, however, and I suspect we'll see it, is that Hippogriff isn't Harry Potter specific. Gryffindor is, and while Harry Harry isn't, it's it's quite clear that if you say Harry, you're probably going to be thinking about something other than Harry Potter. All right, and so if I give it Hippogriff, 
I actually don't. Oh, it's probably because I misspelled it. Is it hippogriff with a Y? <laughs> so the hippogriff um, is not just a Harry Potter character. It's also going to be a mythological character. And I found it right here. It's hippo uh, griff with two Fs. And I'm going to rerun this and it should find hopefully something. I would think. And so what it's doing right now is it's going into all of its vectors and it's seeing what is most similar to the word hippogriff. And we get hippogriffs and we, we get different words of hippogriff, hippogriffs, uh, plural, uh, gryphon, gryphon, uh, thestral. So it's kind of going through and grabbing, a griffin, sorry. It's grabbing uh, things that aren't in Harry Potter. I don't believe a griffin is referenced in Harry Potter. Thestrals are but we're getting kind of a broader domain. What if I use the word Albus, which is what you saw up here originally? So if I use the word Albus, um, I imagine that there's other words out there that aren't just related to Dumbledore in the vector space. Albus, I believe, means white in Latin. I should know this off the top of my head, but I believe it's white uh, and it has meanings in different Romance languages. And if we look at Albus, we're seeing um, we're seeing some stuff. So we see Ni uh, Niger. Uh, Lupin, uh, Marinus, Marinus, Albus. Um, so we kind of go down the down the list. We're seeing some stuff that's relevant to Harry Potter, but stuff that's representative of the real world. And again, just for demonstration purposes, I'll I'll throw out uh, Legilimency, which would be a very kind of uh, Harry Potter specific uh, task. So we'll see how well it generalizes on a Harry Potter specific task. All of this is to show you why a model. Uh, that is meant to serve a general purpose might struggle with a domain-specific issue. So here you go, legilimency, uh, not in uh, the vector space. This is what this error means. It doesn't have that word in its knowledge base. So that's a word that would have to generalize on. So that's kind of a sense of how spacey similarity works and where it kind of fails when it comes to a specific domain like Harry Potter. I'm going to zoom down now to the end of this list and I believe I grabbed some of this stuff off of Stanford's uh, uh, a, a little bit of Stanford code that I found. But what we're going to do is we're going to calculate, and it's also in the Jensen uh, documentation, we are going to try to calculate uh, similarity between uh, uh, in a, a special set of Harry Potter vectors that I've trained. You can see it underneath word underscore vectors. So these are, and I'm going to be talking about how I train these in the next video. These are, um, these are vectors that I train specifically on the Harry Potter books. And I'll explain the methodology, the code and everything in the next video. But let me test the similarity of just the word Gryffindor with vectors that are only, that are only developed from the Harry Potter books. So very minimal vocabulary, but as you'll see in the next video, 5,000 dimensions of understanding. So we're going to use the word Gryffindor right now. And what it's doing is this bit of code, this function is going in to these Jensen vectors in the Jensen model and finding similarity in the Jensen vectors. So it's finding them outside of Spacey. And if we look at this, we see Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, uh, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and 50 points, that's kind of odd, are all very closely connected together. We see Seeker, Diadem, Quidditch Team, Quidditch Match. So what you're seeing here is, um, are all the houses represented as being very, very similar in context. What you're seeing here is not a synonym representation, rather a clustered representation. And in order to understand what's happening here, we need to take a step back and look and examine at what the model is actually seeing. Now, these are 5,000 dimensions that we're going to see plotted out in two-dimensional space. So what we are looking at here is a plot of all of the words that are in our vectors. So these are all the words that are associated with the books from book one to book seven of Harry Potter. Now, while this might look like a jumbled mess, and it really is, it actually has a lot of very important information here. What it represents is a reduction of those 5,000 dimensions of each word down to a single two-dimensional plot. So an x-axis 
and a y-axis. And what this allows for us as humans to do is to see the way in which the model understands, the Jensen model understands its worlds, how it understands the very domain-specific world of Harry Potter. What we can do is we can zoom in to get a better sense. What you're looking at is a plot of all of the words and these clusters or groupings of words. These groupings represent words that are similar. So they either have similar meaning or are used in similar contexts. Let's pick one cluster. How about this one right here? So when we zoom in, and this might be a little illegible on your screen, so I'll kind of help you out with what these words actually say. Uh, we've got the word Hagrid right here. We've got Fang, which is Hagrid's dog. We got dog right here next to Fang. Forest, which is next to Hagrid's hut. We've got drink. Uh, we've got Buckbeak, the hippogriff. And we got hippogriff right there. So what we have here is a Hagrid-like cluster. And if we zoom in right here, we actually have a more interesting cluster. Ferenzi, Ronin, and Bane. For those of you who are true Harry Potter nerds like me, will immediately recognize these three individuals as the three named centaurs. Why this is interesting is that they are clearly placed very, very close and within that so-called Hagrid cluster. They're right here very closely clustered together. So what that means is that the word vectors have harmonized so well that they've understood not only the concept of centaurs being attached to uh, Hagrid, but the, specifically the named centaurs as being a single cluster of individuals that are used in similar contexts. So it's identified the named centaurs from all the Harry Potter books, or at least the ones that are used the most common. If we zoom out again, let's take a look at another cluster, kind of at a different area of the map. I'm picking this one here. What we're seeing here... It, look, yeah, it is. It's uh, it's entirely a cluster based around the uh, the pedagogical activities activities or the classwork activities at Harry Potter. So what we're seeing is it looks like this might be defense against the dark arts, dark arts and defense. Yes, it is. Uh, we can go back to the previous view and let's look at all this. We have herbology, charms, divination, potions, creatures, the defense, dark. These are all. Uh, Harry Potter classes, care of magical creatures. Remember, it drops out those stop words. And we only had bigrams. We didn't have trigrams. If we did, we would have seen care of, or we would have seen care underscore magical underscore creatures. And we see creatures right here. So it knows those two are connected. But because it's not representing a trigram, it's not actually showing it all there. And history of magic right here, history underscore magic. But look, it's not just uh, the actual classes. And we see defense against the dark arts right there. It's also the concepts of a classroom. Results, class, teacher, teaching. We also have the professors, McGonagall, Professor Flitwick, Sprout, teachers. We've got essay, notes. These are all pedagogical things. This means that it's done a really, really good job at understanding the classroom aspect of the Harry Potter books. Let's zoom back out and just take a look at another cluster. Let's pick right down here. And it took me a second. Okay, it looks like what we're looking at here, and we see up here we got owls kind of clustered together. So we have owl, hedwich, cage, pigwidgeon, which is another owl, uh, snowy, which is the kind of owl that uh, hedwidge is. I believe it's a snowy white owl. Uh, if we look down here, we've got Gryffindor common room, common room, Gryffindor tower. So the 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 concepts of the of the Gryffindor area. Uh, then we have over here uh, classroom, great hall. So. Uh, so other aspects of the actual uh, castle itself, dungeons, classroom, bell. If we zoom out, let's pick something else. Let's pick something that's probably not going to be too proper nouny. So you can demonstrate why it's, how it's able to understand regular words. So if we look at this, we're seeing kind of just generic words in Harry Potter that are all kind of clustered together. Plans, forever, bring, use. This is a result of a corpus that is exceptionally small and a corpus where these words that are used kind of without any real clear understanding or context are kind of just plotted generically. So we're not going to see really great results here. But if we look here, we have a very dense cluster. And remember, if you're looking at a cluster and it's closely, closely, closely clustered, it means it has a high degree of similarity. So Wizengenmot is, I believe, the wizard council 
to which Albus Dumbledore was a, a, a part, I believe, uh, Ministry of Magic, which is another bureaucratic aspect of Harry Potter, connected very closely to Cornelius Fudge. So we're seeing clusters there that that make perfect sense. If we uh, we see Gringotts down here and goblins and vaults, so the banking stuff is right there. If we zoom back out again, let's pick another cluster and just for one more example to kind of explore. This looks like a really densely packed group. Okay, right here, this is very clearly everything associated with Quidditch. So we're seeing uh, Quidditch, uh, Quidditch, Quidditch match, training, play, Oliver Wood. He's the, the captain right here, the captain of the Gryffindor common, uh, uh, the Gryffindor team. Or sorry, he's the, uh, the keeper of the Gryffindor team and the captain. So we're seeing all those kind of being associated with him. The Quidditch team, 50 points. Uh, the cup, which is, of course, the Quidditch cup. And then over here, we're seeing uh, all the houses of Harry Potter densely, closely packed together. So we're seeing the house, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, Slytherin. And that's interesting because you're seeing these houses are most commonly used. This is kind of a surprise to me, but it makes sense, I guess. They're most commonly used in the context of the sport of Quidditch. So when Quidditch is being referenced, that's when you're seeing a lot of these members being cited or these uh, houses being cited. And if we zoom in, it looks like we have a Zacharias Smith. That's a character. So it's correctly identified these as the same person, person, Zacharias and Smith. Probably he's the only Smith in the whole book, I would guess. So that's why it's associating the surname or last name with Smith. So I think that was what we just looked at. Let's pop in just to see what this is saying. Uh, Lavender Brown. So that's a biogram because she's used so frequently. And here, this is a good example of how it was able to understand uh, synonyms. So uh, the words associated with kind of shock, confusion, um, those em emotive concepts, stunned, frightened, confused, nervous, it's identified these as um, emotional states, if you will, it looks like, raised eyebrows, alarm, impressed, annoyed. These are all emotional states, and it's lumped them as having kind of a similar clustered meaning, not in the sense that they are synonyms, but in the sense that they are used to express those emotive, those emotional states of a character. So that's how... That's what word vectors look like when plotted two-dimensionally. This is what our model is doing, except not in two dimensions, but it's understanding each word in 5,000 dimensions. So imagine each word being plotted like this, but f uh, 5,000 times, and those 5,000 plots being connected to 5,000 plots of each and every other word. And that's how our model is able to use word vectors to understand meaning. It's through this mathematical clustering and this mathematical similarity. So that's word vectors very, very generally. We're going to be exploring word vectors over the next three or four videos as we work more and more closely with Gensum to generate custom word vectors on the Harry Potter books. We're going to see some of the struggles that we are going to have with generating word vectors on a very limited corpus. And we're going to discuss some of the ways to over overcome those limitations. That's going to be it for this video. Join me in the next video as we train custom word vectors in Gensum and in the further videos as we inject those word vectors into a custom spacey NER model. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening.